sent the script. I heard Danny Boyle and I read the title Trance and then read it and was completely blown away by this genre bending, psychological heist movie. Anyone could steal a painting. There was no need for a gun. All it took was a bit of muscle and some nerve. You don't try and make it look like a noir, but you try and take elements of it and exploit the good bits of it. I owe him a lot of money, and I don't know what I'm going to do. For me, it was the opportunity to make a twisty, turny, entertaining thriller with Danny, and it felt like a, a sort of really refreshing departure, actually, from the last couple of films we made together. Danny is interested in pushing ideas, unexpected and interesting directions. There's quite a lot of violence in the film. It's an intense experience and it's a gathering darkness as it begins to reveal itself. So where's she gone? Huh? Don't let her get away, Simon, not after all this. I'm a huge fan of Danny's films and I know there are going to be visual things and elements in this film that are going to be really profound for people to experience that will help them to digest the story or make certain parts of the story even more mysterious and more layered. I had this dream. It wasn't a dream. Camera movement is quintessential for Danny and I. I had all these ideas and you chuck them across the table at each other and he receives it and it goes into the machine of his and he deals with it and he comes back out, you know, in a sort of more organised Danny Boyle way. And that's what makes him an interesting man to work for. Danny is definitely trying new stuff and he does this very modern kind of cinema, but in the same time he comes from a theatre world. His relationship to acting and actors in general is very uh, organic. We took a kind of more classical approach, and it's also an acknowledgement that it's absolutely actor-based. We let them play their cards in the way that they want, rather than have a style that you kind of savagely impose. Where is it? I can't remember! I got hit on the head! That you remember. One of the reasons Danny's such a great director is because he's a great leader. You try and create this environment in which everyone is completely immersed in the telling of this story. And you have absolute faith that whatever bumps in the road you may or may not experience, you'll get there in the end. It's a pleasure dome, the film, as well. You know, you want, in the end, the exercising of the people's imagination in joining with you for the 90 minutes of the film to make them feel like they've been through an adrenalizing experience. I remember. I love thrillers and I love noir. Ever been hypnotized before? There's something hidden inside me. Whatever is in his head, she can find. You try to take the idea of the noir, of a world where there is no pity. And you try and mess with it. You make it more emotionally moving, where you have three characters trapped inside a bubble. And that has darker and darker consequences as the film goes on. What is it? It's a memory. A memory of what you did. The other element of it is it's a film about consciousness, really, because it involves hypnotism in some way, which is that you take that power and you put it in the hands of a beautiful woman locked inside a puzzle with these two guys. It's a wonderful dynamic. There's something very, very subversive about three. What is this film about? The film is about identity and about self-possession and this mind-bending, genre-bending, psychological heist movie. Stop right there. <laughs> who's good, who's bad, it's not quite clear. At first, you might think one thing, and then it becomes something else, and then by the end, it's something else. Where is it? You must have put it somewhere. I can't remember, I'm sorry, I can't remember. When you hit him on the head, you broke the thread. It's interesting, this movie starts off as a, a sort of simple art heist film and then turns into a thriller with these three protagonists who are playing each other with the information that they're holding. There's like a, like if it's a poker game, you know, everyone's holding their cards really close to their chest and you don't know who's bluffing or not. You don't know who's gonna really win and if they're gonna cheat or if they've really got a great hand. It's really interesting. It's all part of your plan, yeah? What are you talking about? We are, in a way, not quite sure where his consciousness lies. It's really a, a loss of all control. I don't think you, you can trust the world you're in any longer, really. 
and he abandons it. I just really need to find this thing. Hypnosis is the perfect tool for what you want. Hypnotism clearly has a power that has to be controlled. And that, you think, oh, that's really interesting thing to make a film about. What can you make them do? If you have the right person, if you get a hold of them, dig right in, you can make them want to do almost anything. Elizabeth, I have something to tell you. The film is not like a technical exercise. If it was, every film would be a hit. You ready? They're a mystery, really, and it's lovely to make one that actually deliberately occupies that territory. I remember. It's an illusion and a revelation at the same time, and you have to try and balance those elements in it, really, as you watch it. I remember. I remember everything. <laughs> What makes us who we are? A beautiful woman, a violent criminal, and a fragile James McAvoy. You know who you are? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. The problem for all the characters in the film is this idea of perception and reality. Who's to say what is real, really? One of the things about this film is that the performances have to be really nailed on, because when the audience, as they're meant to be, in a position when they don't really know what's happening, they can still latch on to the performances. The great thing about the three characters is that they're great parts, but it's also who you should believe, who you should follow of those three. Nobody's really the bad guy or the good guy. We're all bad and we're all victims at the same time. We're all good and bad at different times. It's just hard to fathom where the script is going. It's just such a mystery. There's nothing behind these characters to make you feel like, should I take them on their word? I don't know. Part of the, the device of the film is who to trust, really. Who can you trust? And you definitely begin the film trusting James McAvoy. James has got, he's a wonderful facility as an actor. You feel very secure with him straight away. You see him at the beginning of the film, very confident, carrying out the security drill. He appears to be absolutely in control, on the up. Good job. The classic definition of a good, entertaining narrator. And whether you still root for him in the end is one of the puzzles of the film. Simon, the plan was simple. All you needed to do was take the painting and bring it to me. Vincent Cassell, who kind of appears to be playing a version of Vincent Cassell, because you, you kind of, he's done so many gangsters, criminals, that you go, oh, it's Vincent Cassell playing a criminal. But actually, he's got a journey by the end of the film, which is perhaps a little surprising. I want you to think about someone else. Elizabeth Lamb the hypnotherapist from Harley Street, played by Rosario Dawson. You get the feeling of the femme fatale, a woman who uses her sexual allure, her beauty, to pit these men against each other. But it's more complicated than that. She's using you, Simon. She's using you like she used us. The journey that those characters make, that's one of the things that attracts you to, to the film, and I'm sure it attracts those three actors. It was a joy to be working with the Vincent Cassell and the James McAvoy, and at the end of it, them just be Vincent and James. When you work with people that are really invested in, in what they do and they're passionate about what they do, it's easy. And that's the way it should be. I think movie making in terms of relationship between people on set should be easy. <laughs> if I wanted to kill you, why aren't you dead? Because she loves me and I love her. It's not a romantic comedy in the sense that you have the perfect couple who are going to go through a troublesome time where they lose each other, but you know they'll come back and get each other. Those are dependable, reliable, trustworthy things. What's lovely about the triangle is that you do not know. No, 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 please. It's three characters locked in a deadly embrace, and you do not know who's going to come out of this. Meowty Pig. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to watch our other videos including our top 10 upcoming horror films of 2013 and our extensive behind the scenes inside looks of recent and upcoming films.